Hello and welcome to the Autocar Show. Now the BMW X5 has just been launched and its obvious competitor is the segment leader, the Q7. It's always been the one to beat. Does the X5 have what it takes is what we're going to find out. The new X5 looks very similar to its predecessor, but when you look closer, you can spot the changes. There are twin circular headlamps that now merge into the wider kidney grille. The contour lines have a familiar feel and though the changes are small, it's now a more muscular and sharper looking SUV. The Q7 is massive in its proportions and with its open-mouthed grille, slit headlamps and wide haunches, it looks ready to gobble up anything else on the road. It has Audi's now famous LED daytime running lights and when it was launched, it was quite the looker. But it's been around a long while now and in the same avatar, it's become all too familiar. On the inside, it's pretty much the same story. The Q7's cabin is luxurious and has everything you really need Quality is good too, everything falls to hand easily, but it's jaded and feels old-fashioned compared to the spanking new X5. This one moves away from the normally stayed BMW all-black interior and plays with colours, textures and finishes. It's smart and sassy and has some funky stuff like the scribble pad on the iDrive that make it really easy to use. It has a detailed rear-view camera and the integrated screen is now a tablet-like display that sits atop the dash. This screen can be split to show you two functions simultaneously. Like I said, it's all fresher and funkier. Now both cars come with massive boots, but the Q7 has the bigger one. It doesn't feel its size from the inside, you know, it just wraps itself around you so beautifully. It doesn't feel like this huge SUV that it looks like from the outside. The steering is light and easy, so it's very manoeuvrable as well. Now, if I sit in my normal height in the X5, this binnacle seems really high. Not that it hampers vision, but it's just sort of a little intrusive. I can, of course, raise the seat height, but then it's not the way I'm used to normally driving. Under the hood, both come with 3-litre diesels. Q7 has 240 bhp of power and 56 kgm of torque, and the X5 has 255 bhp of power and 57.1 kgm of torque. This engine is impressive, the way it pulls this massive car and actually manages to feel punchy and torquey. It's almost two-tonner, feels quick and fun to drive. Put your foot down and you get shoved back into your seat with this massive surge of torque. And it gets to triple digit speeds in a flash. It's quick and how. It gets to the 100 mark in just 6.9 seconds and the Q7 can't keep pace. The beauty is that the power in the X5 comes in as low as 1500 RPM and with little or no lag, you never find yourself looking for more. There's power to get you through all your overtake manoeuvres, squeeze you through a traffic gap or just muscle you out of a corner. What makes it even better is the 8-speed ZF gearbox that shifts deftly and quickly, always keeping pace with what you want. Always keeping the car in the right rev range. The Q7 used to feel pretty quick and we were always amazed with how this small engine felt in this behemoth. But in this comparison, it pales and feels a little lacklustre. With the facelift, the Q7 did trade in its 6-speed gearbox for an 8-speed one, which does feel better, but it's still not as quick as the one in the X5. The Q7 is happy to trundle around at city speeds quite comfortably, but is really not for energetic driving. The trick really is to avoid stepping on the gas and use it more in path throttle, which works much better and you can make the best use of the torque. The Q7's engine is also the more refined engine of the two. Now around the corners, the Q7 is quite agile for its size. And in sport mode, you can really enjoy some spirited driving. 
The Quattro works well to keep you in control, but the steering does let it down, feeling a little numb and devoid of feel. But that lighter steering is a plus in city conditions, making the large Q7 quite manoeuvrable and easy to drive. But around the corners, there's no doubt which one makes you feel more sure-footed. Now, though this X5 is huge and it is really high up, it still corners amazingly well for a car of this proportion. Dynamically, there's no doubt that this is the one that's more thrilling to drive. The way it bites into corners and then goes around them is truly surprising for its size. Its ability to change direction without ever feeling unsettled and power you out of corners makes it thrilling. The steering is also light and easy when you need, but when you want some spirited driving, it feels positive and accurate. And it always gives you confidence. In fact, so much so that you will push harder and harder without ever getting flustered. Now, you can have all the drama you want behind the wheel, but the fact remains that in India, most people who own these vehicles won't be driving them. So it's really that the chauffeur is going to pick the car based on the performance. It's more about the back seats and what the owners want. But in terms of space, the Q7 is still the clear winner. With its comfort and luxury in the back seat, good ride quality or after, the Q7 offers it up in huge measures. The Audi has more space to begin with and with the slider function on the middle row, you can free up even more legroom if there aren't any passengers in the third row. Talking of which, it is a small area in the third row, definitely only for kids, but it's still better than the one in the BMW. The BMW's third row is so hard to get into and then once you're inside, even for someone as short as me, it's knees in your chin position and really cramped. The middle row of the BMW also feels smaller and you do have to slide the seat back to get comfortable. The Audi also impresses in the way it gobbles up road imperfections. The suspension soaks up bumps and potholes without much of a fuss, making this back seat a really comfortable place. It was really hard to tell the actual ride quality on our Test X5 which came with 21 inch rims and looked awesome but with the ultra low profile tyres it made the ride stiff and a lot of the road filtered through. So I strongly recommend sticking to the regular wheels and tyres. Well it's no doubt that the X5 is impressive on many fronts, I mean the interiors feel like a whole generation ahead, materials used are really great, it's packed with features. Dynamics and performance are thrilling to say the least. So if you're looking for a car that you can enjoy from behind the wheel, well then it's a no-brainer, the X5 is your choice. But if you're in this segment to sit back in the back seat and enjoy yourself, stretch out, relax and cruise around, then the Q7 is still your perfect choice.